How's it going guys? Welcome to my home city. This is 48 Hours in London. It's 6am. We are currently on the way to Big Ben. Sunrise. I'm tired but I'm enthusiastic. We've got to get the best possible content for you guys. Okay, I'll give it to Carl. It was worth the early alarm because if you want to get places like this empty in London, you've got to beat the crowds, which I'm sure we're going to see a lot of as we move on throughout the day. Quick one before we move on, this is the COVID wall, where everybody comes and pays their respects to those that lost their lives to COVID. You can see all the little red hearts, which is a nice touch as you walk along the River Thames. Righty-o chaps, I feel like I should put my best English accent on for all you darlings watching at home today. You know, grab a cup of tea, take a crumpet and enjoy the show. I can't, I could never do it, I'm too common for that. Okay, so the plan today is to show you the best of London. Maybe you've been here before and it will bring back a few memories for you. Maybe you've never been or had the opportunity and you can see it through my eyes. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm fairly new to London, but we're gonna smash out the tourist spots in Central and then do some more local stuff as well. I'm gonna get used to this walking backwards stuff, but as we cross Westminster Bridge, you got the Houses of Parliament, where all the big decisions are made. Big Ben behind us that you've already seen. And if we do a 180, come on Carl. <laughs> We got the London Eye, which we're not going to be doing today. I've done that when I was 10 years old and... <coughs> the lengths Carl goes through for the shot, his dedication to the craft is sensational. But I think he got the perfect shot. So we're on our way now to St James's Park, but quickly, Westminster Abbey, probably the most famous church in the UK. Little statue there, not sure if you can see it, of uh, the main man Winston Churchill. And we're gonna head across the road now and take some photos at the famous red phone boxes. Let's get creative. This wasn't on the itinerary at all, but as we were passing through to St James's Park, we both needed a bit of grub, it's been an early start. We popped into a place called Kendall's Calf for a fry up. Full English breakfast is something you have to do when you come to London. So this is what we call a fry up, a traditional English breakfast normally consists of toast, baked beans, hash brown, some kind of egg, got a grilled tomato, mushroom, and then if you're getting the meat one like Carl, you get bacon and sausage as well. And I'll tell you what, that is not bad for a fiver in Westminster. We'll take it. Also, by the way, this is not an everyday occurrence. In fact, I can't remember the last time I had a fry up. I very rarely have this, but people probably have it once a week, maybe at the weekend. Well, that was a little hidden gem, wasn't it? Let's get out in some nature. So green spaces in London are so important. As you can probably imagine, being in the city gets a bit claustrophobic sometimes. And we've got some awesome parks. Hyde Park is one of the most famous. We're now gonna take a little stroll through St. James's Park, bang in the city, and we're gonna head through to probably the most famous house of them all. something you see every day is it? Police rolling around on white horses. You're definitely getting the full London experience today. Okay so we've come out of St James's Park, we are now on the Mall, which is basically the driveway to Buckingham Palace and we've either timed it awfully or perfectly because we've walked right into the changing of the guard and I can hear them, here they come. That was interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> I lost Carl for a second, I had to grab his bag and I was running down the mall, but yeah. pretty cool experience. Yeah, 
car got separated. We nearly lost each other for a minute. So we've moved a little east now. We've hopped out at Monument. That is the monument behind us, which commemorates the Great Fire of London, 1666. We've got to move swiftly on though, because we've got a date with a skyscraper. come down to Sky Garden, this for me is the best free viewpoint in London. So Sky Garden is completely free to visit, but you have to book your tickets online in advance. They get sold out in like minutes. They release on a Monday, the first three weeks are completely impossible to get. And then some people queue up in hopes of getting in. Luckily, we've got a bit of backdoor entrance. That sounded really wrong, but you know what I mean. Welcome to the 35th floor and the top of London. This is Sky Garden. Obviously we're pretty high up, vertigo is kicking in, but from here you get an awesome view of most of the iconic landmarks in central London. You've got Tower Bridge, the Tower of London, the Shard, HMS Belfast, the Warship, and even London Bridge itself. So we're going to have a little scout around of the area and then get back down to ground level and explore it for ourselves. Okay, we're in a garden, so we better go and find some greenery. And we're back down to ground level. Feels good, nice and safe down here. We are currently walking across London Bridge, not to be confused with Tower Bridge. We're gonna do a little loop, full circle, starting at a spot called the Queen's Walk. So there's not much to tell you here apart from the fact that it's about a mile there and back. We're gonna walk down the south side of the river, cross over Tower Bridge, and back along the north side of the river and pass a few noticeable places along the way. That's me and Carl. And there it is, the big boy Tower Bridge itself. Fun fact, this is my running route. Every morning I come down Liverpool Street, do a big lap, and I just find it so motivational. It never gets old for me. Although I have only been in the city about eight months, so maybe at some point it'll get a bit dreary. Also, we're gonna head down and take some photos right now, but it's probably gonna be jam-packed full of tourists, even at 2 p.m. on a Monday. But if you're looking for an empty spot, it goes without saying, get here early. Me and Carl came down a couple of days ago and shot an advert for Canon at sunrise. It was absolutely beautiful, and there was not a single person in sight. That's the view, isn't it? I mean, it's not quite New York, but that's the best cityscape you're gonna get in London. And then just around the corner, you've got the Tower of London, home to the crown jewels. Dude, we are smashing the tourist spots. What else do you wanna see? Let me know in the comments if you think I've missed anything. What are we missing? A red, bu red bus? You want a red bus? I'll get you a red bus. Fuel time, and there's only one thing to eat for your first dinner in London. So we've come down to a place called Poppy's. It was established in 1952, and you'll see my posh accent really slip now to a bit of Cockney because this reminds me of growing up as a kid and going to the local chippy, and now this is my local chippy in Shoreditch. Lovely bit of old decoration in here, got a bit of Cockney rhyme and slang on the walls, and playing old music. So really setting the scene for a bit of English tradition. All right, so I'll talk you through what we got. Obviously, it goes without saying, you got fish and chips for Carl. Myself, deja vu, vegetarian option. I've got a Cornish pasty full of vegetables. What we do, we dose it with vinegar, we dose it with salt, and then we've got a side of mushy peas and a bit of bread and butter to mop up whatever's left. Mm. Proper chippy chips. Solid meal. Reminds me of my grandma's house, the smell in there, but we have to regather ourselves, Carl. I can barely breathe. We're on to the final location for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I have had a second wind, probably a third wind by this stage. We've come down to the Millennium Bridge, aka the Wobbly Bridge, aka the Harry Potter Bridge. This is one that got smashed in one of the movies, don't ask me which. But behind, we've got some pools in the background. We're going to have a little stroll around a golden hour and see what we can create. So I feel like we've seen London from many different angles today, but this has got to be one of my favourite spots in the evening. As the sun comes down, you get a massive cityscape in the backdrop, and it always stretches as far as Canary Wharf, 
past Tower Bridge, the Shard, all the main landscapes in the city. Boom! We made it to St Pauli's Cathedral. See what I've done there? <laughs> Let's have a little explore. We love a city at night time. Okay team, I think that's enough for day one, isn't it? We've absolutely smashed it, my legs are killing me. So, I'm gonna head home. Usually, we'd go to the hotel, but I'm going back to my house. I'll see you in the morning. Tally ho. All right, day two. I hope you slept well, because I'm absolutely knackered, but I'm gonna show you around my neighborhood today. We're in East London. This is a place called Shoreditch. Okay, first stop on the itinerary is Spitalfields Market. It's open daily, it's home to a lot of independent traders, bit of jewellery, bit of clothing, and plenty of food in the middle, which is what I need. market don't we and I feel like we're gonna see a few of them today because Sundays in London is what it's all about and I just love seeing all the creatives putting their stuff on display and uh, trying to make a bit of coin okay this is dangerous because walking around the market all you can smell is delicious food although I promised Carla Bagel on Brick Lane so we're gonna keep it moving got a few little spots to show you along the way the first is this it's the Ten Bells pub and this is Jack the Ripper's old spot he used to come here apparently grab a beer and prey on his victims for the night before following them home and then <laughs> So this is an interesting one. The old pink car you can see behind us is actually an artwork of Banksy's. If you don't know Banksy, he's a very famous British street artist. He's known for being stealth. Not many people see him and he expresses his political views through his artwork. Although this is just a random Triumph GT6 that was dumped on top of these containers one night and nobody quite knows how it got there. I'll give a quick shout out to Sleazy on the way through. They're closed right now, but it's the best pizza in East London. Welcome to Brick Lane. This is my home. I live just a few blocks up that way, but today I'm going to give you a little tour. It's a very hipster, quirky, cool area known for graffiti, artwork, a lot of vintage shopping. It's not normally this busy, but seeing as it's a Sunday, tourists flock in, so we're going to have to weave in and out of them. I love about living on Brick Lane is you meet people from all walks of life. It's very multicultural, there's a lot of different cuisines and anything's welcome here, you know? People don't bat an eyelid. funny one for me to film because I feel like I'm not working, I'm just living my normal Sunday, you know? This is one of the most interesting characters you'll find on Brick Lane. He comes every Sunday on the market, sets up five chess boards and plays for free. But you know professional chess players, they hit it on a timer, so he'll play like five people at once. I've never seen him be beaten. So I've got to give a quick shout out to Benzie. He's one of the guys that you'll see doing most of the artwork around Brick Lane. Always just chilling, the nicest guy. So we've got to give the artist his full credit. All right, you ready to fight for a bagel? Because this is going to be busy. This is London's most famous bagel shop. This is insane, I've never seen it so busy. The queue is all the way back to the traffic lights. I literally live on the next street and it's open 24 hours a day, so I'm doing this for you guys. 
We're almost there, but I'll give you the lowdown. There's actually two bagel shops right next door to each other on Brick Lane. The original one with the yellow sign was opened in 1855. This one is not half as old, but for some reason, this is the one everybody goes to. So the bagel to get is a salt beef with mustard and gherkin. If you know, I'm vegetarian, so I always go for an egg mayo. But I've got a traditional one for Carl, so we'll get his reaction. It's a safe bet, isn't it? And for £2.20, that's the best thing. They've kept the prices low. All right, let's go, Carl. All Give right. me your reaction. <laughs> Everything fits well together. The funny thing with the salt beef one is you genuinely get like half a cow in there. All right. So we do that at least once a week, living in Brick Lane. And now we need something to wash it down with. And I've got the perfect place. This, in my opinion, is the best hot chocolate in London. That's the one, look. You can just about catch the last of the shavings melting in. I'm gonna give it a good mix. And it's got a hint of ginger in it. My absolute favorite. So this is a spot called Dark Sugars. It's primarily a high-end chocolate shop, but they also use the cacao and the chocolate shavings to make an absolutely banging hot chocolate. It's a little bit expensive at £4.50 a hot chocolate, plus 50p for the shavings that you can't miss, but I highly recommend it. Cheers. Next up on Charlie's tour of East London, seeing as it's a Sunday, Come with me to Columbia Road Flower Market. So as you can see, it's absolutely manic. You thought Brick Lane was bad. People flock from all over London to get their fresh flowers here. And on a Sunday, you've got all the traders competing, shouting out their prices and trying to get a bargain. I always make a joke on Instagram that I'm gonna find a wife here one day. So if you catch that on camera, Carl. That's why Charlie has so many pants in his house. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'm here every Sunday. <laughs> Absolutely manic. Let's get out of there, Carl. No flowers, no wife. Let's go get a roast dinner. traditional pub in Hackney, just off Columbia Road Market before you hit Broadway Market if you know the area. Got a little orange juice lemonade, cheers to that. And we're waiting on a roast dinner to come through. All right, so this smells like most houses in England on a Sunday. Definitely reminds me of being at home with my parents. Sunday roast. I know we've got a few international viewers, you might not know, but traditionally on Sunday, we have a roast dinner. So that normally consists of roast beef, roast chicken, maybe roast pork. For me, as a vegetarian, I've got a cauliflower cheese option, and then you've got a bit of everything. So we've got roast vegetables, normally potatoes, carrots, maybe parsnips. I've got a bit of mashed swede here, beetroot, kale, and of course, the big boy, the Yorkshire pudding. And then it's all covered in gravy. Well, Chalk Farm to be precise. We're gonna head up to Primrose Hill. We were gonna call it a night, but we've got to try and get a sunset and a view to sign out the 48 hours in London.
Reminds me a little bit of the hills in San Francisco, so if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. But we've made it to the top of Primrose Hill, one of my favourite views of London City in the evening. And as you can see, it's kind of a couple romantic spot. And again, it's me and Carl, man. What's going on here? from up here as soon as the sun goes down in London it gets a little bit chilly but hope you have enjoyed this 48 hours in my home city catch you very soon on the next one me and Carl are gonna get home and get some chocolate Thank you.